Hi, my name is Tiana Karamayas and I'm a Cavoodle puppy coach and breeder from Oodle Way and River City Puppies. As a coach, my philosophy is simple. A Cavoodle should always complement your lifestyle, not complicate it. And this is the foundation to everything I teach. For almost the past decade, I have been working in the breeding, training, grooming, and veterinary sectors of the small animal industry. I've also been raising Cavoodles for the past 16 years, so I have definitely learned a thing or two about the breed along the way. Now this podcast is all about Cavoodles. Raising Cavoodles, training Cavoodles, grooming Cavoodles, breeding Cavoodles, and how to shape the behavior of a Cavoodle puppy. So if you're a Cavoodle parent or you're looking at adding a Cavoodle to your family soon, then this podcast is for you. New episodes will be released each Tuesday morning and you can follow me across all social media under the name at OodleWay for more tips and advice on Cavoodles. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, welcome back to episode 14 of the Cavoodle Coach Podcast Rebooted. My name is Tiana Karamayas and I'm your host. Today, I want to talk about, I guess... <sighs> expectations as a new puppy parent for your new puppy, your new Cavoodle. Um, I think it's, it's a topic that needs to be discussed. So what I mean by this, okay, so let's, let's just dive into it. I'm, I, I just really want to get what's in my head <laughs> out onto this podcast. Um, because I think expectations for your Cavoodle is really, really going to impact what your life is going to look like with them especially in those early months. Now, when we are getting a puppy, uh, if if you've decided to get a puppy, if you've you've already got an older dog, you know, think back to when you were getting your puppy. Everyone who is getting a puppy and and makes that big decision, yes, I'm getting a puppy. Yes, I've put a deposit down for a breeder. My puppy is arriving in X amount of weeks. We all go into it with the same thoughts in our head. And that is, I want to do everything right with my puppy and I am going to do a lot of training with them and I want, they're going to be so well behaved and they're going to be so good. And I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that's the case. And if you've been listening to my podcast or you follow me on Instagram, you'll know how big I am about creating a routine for your puppy because puppies thrive off routine and it's going to make your life a lot easier. And so if you agree with me, when I talk about this, you'll also have it in your head that every single day we're going to follow this routine and we are going to stick to it. And our puppy is going to be really, really good. And this is a very good way to be thinking. We want to stay very optimistic and we want to have that passion and that motivation and that determination to spend the time with our puppy, to make sure we are training them, to make sure we are teaching them how to behave in our house and out in public. Because if you don't do this when you first get your puppy and they go through their critical socialization period, which is from around three to 12 weeks of age, if they go through this time and you're not doing the work with them, this means that down the track, it's going to be much harder to, you know, make that same progress. You're probably not going to make the same progress and your puppy is going to have different fears, anxieties already in place because the way that they view the world changes after 12 weeks because the, the chemicals in their brain pretty much change and the way they view the world changes. So we really want to make sure when we are getting a puppy that we do make this plan to, you know, do everything we can with them to set them up for success and to set them up for a life without anxiety. You know, that's the main thing for Cavoodles. We want to set them up for a life without anxiety. And if we do this, then they will complement your lifestyle and they won't complicate it. But, you know, despite saying all of this, when I speak to all of my, you know, clients, one-on-one clients or anyone in my programs, it's also really important that we manage our expectations for our puppy. And what I mean by that is we have to remember at the end of the day, that your puppy is its own little being. Your puppy has its own thoughts, it has its own opinions, and it has its own desires. And if we spend every day of our life with our puppy, forcing them to do things they don't want to do, they're going to get frustrated, they're going to get irritated, and they're going to start kicking up more of a fuss. And because of this frustration inside of them, they're going to start searching for for ways to get rid of this frustration. And that might mean starting to chew on furniture, it might mean biting more, it might mean barking, it might mean digging. And so we need to, we need to balance our routine and our socialization and our enrichment and our desensitization and our impulse control and all of that. We need to balance it and we need to do it while also still keeping in mind our puppy and, and what they are telling us that day. You know, if your puppy 
had a really bad sleep overnight and you get up and you, you know, go ahead with your routine and you jump straight into some training and some different enrichment and then you place them in a new environment that can be a bit stressful. You know, you're setting yourself up for a disaster. You're not going to have a successful day because your puppy has woken up not in the right frame of mind. And this is okay. On days like that, when your puppy isn't responding the way that you are looking for them to respond or you can tell by their body language that they're already showing signs of stress or anxiety or, or maybe they're tired or, or maybe they're frustrated whatever it is if you're seeing those signs that's when we give them more love that's when we have a more relaxing day with them that's when we take away all of the you know these big learning goals and we just listen to our puppy and we we follow their direction and we let them tell us what they need that day. Maybe it is a lot more sleep. Maybe it is just, you know, some fun play with a toy and, and not so much learning. It's really important that I guess what I'm trying to say is, is with your puppy every day, you're going to have your routine with them. You're going to have your training regime with them. You're going to have these plans with them. But equally as important, we have to wake up and look at our puppy each day and see, okay, is my puppy up for this today? Are they in the right frame of, frame of mind today? Um, and are we going to do this successfully? And I guess on the flip side of this, are you in the right frame of mind today? Are you, you know, up for this? Is this the right time for you to be doing it? Because if you approach any sort of training session or any sort of interaction with your puppy and you're already, you know, maybe stressed, a bit angry, frustrated, rushed, anything like that, your puppy immediately will read this behavior from you. They will feel it in the air, the energy between you, and then they will start to get stressed and you will not get the results you're looking for. So every interaction we have with our puppy, every training session we have with them, you need to be calm. You need to be in a clear head um, and you need to be focused on your puppy and your puppy also needs to be calm. Your puppy also needs to be well rested and they need to have a clear mind so that you both can get, you know, good results out of, you know, your, your, your training session or your interaction together. And I guess the, the reason why I want to say this also is we have to manage our expectations with our puppy. Not every day is going to be a success, successful day. Your puppy goes through different, you know, developmental curves and fear periods very frequently in the first few months of their life, almost weekly. They're, they're going to be reaching new milestones. And, you know, as they get closer to six months of age, their hormones are going to be changing as well, which throws another, you know, curve into, you know, your life with them. And you're going to have to make different adaptions and exceptions for them there to accommodate these new hormones and these new feelings. So it, it you're, when training your puppy and raising a well-behaved and easy cavoodle is as much following a routine as it is following your puppy and their behavior. You cannot raise a puppy to be happy and calm in your home and attentive and loyal and, uh, you know, well-behaved if you don't listen to what they're trying to say to you. It would be like having a child and every time your child asks for something, you just say, no, you have to do this instead. You have to do this. You cannot do that. You must do this. You must go um, and do 10, you know, your your 30 minutes of maths homework right now. You cannot, you know, do your, I don't know, your HP homework instead. You have to do this. If you're, if you're controlling and you don't leave any room, you know, wiggle room for your puppy's own opinions and your puppy's own desires, you're going to be butting heads and it's going to be a hard, stressful relationship, even though you have all the right intentions as a cavoodle parent, you know, to set them up for a good life. I hope this is kind of coming across well because it's it's a it's a really important concept to have in your mind when you're getting a new puppy that not every day is going to go exactly to plan and that's okay. If you learn all of the core theory behind having a puppy, you'll know how to address every single, you'll know how to address every single behavior that your puppy does, every single body language they do, and you'll know how to address it and alter your training to accommodate them and accommodate these needs. And and this is really important to me to teach to families. And that's why in the um, program I'm creating, my my daily Cavoodle Planner, you're going to be able to follow a daily routine. And it's going to be a routine I create by myself literally raising a puppy. I'm going to be keeping a puppy back from my upcoming litters and I'm going to raise it and I'm going to document every single day with this puppy and I'm going to put it into a planner so that you can follow it. But it's also going to show you how some days your puppy's going to wake up and it's not going to be a good day for training and what to do in those days when your puppy's isn't responding, when your puppy isn't in the right frame of mind to train. And that way, you know, for you as a new parent, 
we get to start creating this wonderful and beautiful relationship between our puppy that is full of trust and respect. You know, we trust and respect our puppy and they trust and respect us. And when that's the case, your relationship with your puppy will, you know, surpass all of your wildest dreams because you'll feel like you're on the same wavelength. You'll feel like you're never having to force your puppy to do anything because they're happy to do it with you. Because when you ask them to do something, you they're happy to do it because you also listen to them when they ask for something and you create, it's just, it's the most beautiful bond. And I have it with my own cavoodles. It's this, you know, deeper level of understanding between the both of you where I respect them and their needs and they respect me. And together we're able to create this life of, you know, give and take for both of us rather than just take, take, take from the puppy and never letting the puppy have any autonomy. The last thing I wanted to say is, you know, we have to pick, we also have to pick our battles. And what I mean by this is if you are trying to do something with your puppy and they're not wanting to do what you are asking, I want you to pause and I want you to think, and I want you to say, okay, is it essential right now that the puppy does this? Or can I just, you know, not do this with them and we'll do something else later. And if you're going, I don't really know what you mean, Tiana, let me give you an example. I was talking with a client last week and we were talking about how the mum was trying to, was trying to go to the car with her Cavuto puppy. And she put on the harness, put on the lead, like always to walk out to the car. And today the puppy was just trying to bite the lead. The puppy was not wanting to walk. And so she came to me and she said, well, how can I in those situations get my dog to walk and stop biting the lead? And, you know, some trainers might go down the path of, oh, we need to practice more levers with the lead and you need to redirect their behavior and then you need to use more treats to walk them down the driveway, blah, blah, blah. But for myself as, you know, a trainer, but also someone who honestly just has cavoodles as my own pets and I breed them and I learn all about their behavior and I'm so, it's so important to me that a cavoodle never has its voice taken away. I just said to the lady, well, sure, we could do some training here and try and, you know, direct their behavior and force them into walking. But if your puppy doesn't want to walk from the front door of the car, why don't we just pick them up? You know, why do we have to fight that battle? Why do we have to set them up and start, you know, causing all this stress within our puppy and then put them into a car, um, which is also can be stressful. And then you're going to just pile stresses on top of each other. And then wherever you're going, your puppy is going to start crying or barking and they're not going to be calm and well behaved. So you sort of have to pick your battle and go, is it easier to just pick my puppy up and and carry them to the car today? Or do I really want to fight them to walk through the car? What's more important? And you're never going to make any sort of progress in your training if your puppy is already frustrated or already anxious. You'll you'll just be fighting a losing battle. It'll be like a big wall is there. Nothing is going to get through to your puppy and they're not actually going to learn anything. So pick your battles. If your puppy isn't doing what you're wanting, you know, have a think and go, is this really important for them to do right now? Or can we just stop it right here, make sure their anxiety doesn't skyrocket and just carry them to the car? And up to you, whatever you like, but I'm always the type of trainer and coach who says, let's respect our puppy and its own needs. And if they don't want to walk, I'll just pick them up today. And that's fine. It means tomorrow when we go to do the same thing, we won't have that negative experience there. So your puppy isn't going to automatically try and react that same way again. It'll be like starting on a clean slate and we won't be taking a step back in our training. Okay, so uh, that's it for today's episode. I wanted to talk about the expectations for your puppy as a new Cavuto parent and just how to pick your, how important it is to pick your battles and respect your puppy and their own, you know, needs and desires and what they're trying to say to you. When we're getting our Cavoodles, this isn't the type of relationship where you're, you're getting a dog because they're going to be, you know, protecting the house where it's a little bit more of a here's your job. You're not so much part of the family. Cavoodles are family dogs. They're in our homes. They're in our beds. We involve them with all parts of our lifestyle. And therefore it is so important that this puppy has its own autonomy and gets to have a say in things and that you're able to learn to adjust the training and your interaction with them to accommodate this while still getting the results you want. And that's what I'm going to be teaching you in this new program I'm creating, which is my Cavoodle Planner. If you're interested in this and you're getting a a puppy more towards the end of the year and you would like to hear more about it and be, you know, like be told when it first comes out and early access and all of that, um, what I encourage you to do is to go onto Instagram and send me a DM with the word behavior. And what I'll do is I'll add you to my close friends list. And this is where I'm sharing all of the updates on this 
product um, in this program and creating it. And then I'll let you know when it's released and all of that. My Instagram handle is just at Udaway underscore, or you can just search up my name, Tiana Karamais, whatever is easiest for you or search up Karuta Coach. I come up all like each time um, and send me that DM. I'll add you onto the close friends list and you'll know when this program becomes available. And you'll also get to see the behind the scenes as I actually raise this puppy, which is very, very exciting. Okay. So I will see you in the next episode. This has been your Kavuta coach, Tiana Karamayas. See you later.